This has been a crazy last couple of days for the community ever since this trailer dropped. I thought they were gonna be like, hey guys, Splatoon 3 exists. Here's like a couple of crumbs, maybe some gameplay of the bow, and you know, th then we'll move on. But no, you know, we, we got we, we, we got like all of this. We're just gonna talk about it. Yeah, let's just jump into it. They spend so much time with all these apartments in the background. I, I, I'm not gonna get into it too much because I know I've made like two videos, I think by now already on the apartments. If, if not, I'll make another one eventually, you know I will. But when we load up here into the screen and everybody hops into here, you gotta notice that you definitely do still have that control of where the squids are landing here. You see that we have one guy land here, two guys land here, and one guy land like over here on the right hand side. So there seems to be a decent amount of choice on where you can actually go in the game, like when you first spawn in. I don't know if we saw a confirmation in this uh, that you could still do that after your first spawn in. Maybe, maybe you could go like all the way, maybe even like over, over here on the right, maybe? That'd be pretty cool. Again, it makes it seem like we could still get Bluefin Depot back because with all that ability to kind of like drop wherever you want, you could use that strategically in something like zones, right? But I don't think we see anybody spawn in, so we can't really get that. But moving into this here, of course we have our good boy the crab. I won't go into detail because I just put out a video of it yesterday, but I just... Ah, uh, ah, uh, the crabby boy. Oh, it just fills me with such joy every single time. Every single time. So let's look at what other people are doing at the same time. It looks like... We had a friend over here that needs to spawn in. So let's see if we can see them come up anywhere. I don't think we will, though. And I think this was the bow user charging up over here? Let's just peek that. How long the charges for the bow? Okay, nah. Okay, no, nah, they were just standing there, I think. Now, a lot of people are very curious about this shield and how effective it is. We see this Brella player over here, and I'm trying to figure out if the Brella player's shots are able to go through the shield or not. It looks like the Brella shot actually doesn't go through, because you can see the line of the ink, like, right here along where the shield is. And you see that more ink drops down in front of the umbrella, but it doesn't actually let anything down in front of the shield. So I think it actually does effectively stop the shot, which could be really interesting. And again, people are discussing the fact that this could, like, totally wreck zones <laughs> if the zones aren't big enough. Like, imagine, imagine doing this on, like, the port zone. You'd need, like, two of these, and I guess that'd just, that'd just be it, right? I'm assuming that it probably has to be breakable in some way, because if you could just let this go for whoever knows how many seconds, that'd be a really wacky way to, like, end up in overtime, or even win overtime. It was, there was one mode, definitely, where you could, like, straight up just vamoose your way right up here and just end up in the enemy base in, like, two seconds. I'm curious if they'll keep that, because if they don't, it'll prioritize people having to come, like, you know, up the front. A lot of people aren't going to be used to the idea of jumping from, like, rotating platforms, like, into here. And it'll be interesting to see how, like, that affects the game, as it seems like they really want to go with, like, a more mobility-based game this time, which is cool. I'm okay with that. I have no idea <laughs> what to expect from this one. My first thought is, oh no, if Camp Triggerfish comes back, please don't let it come back. You could have people just disregard the center of the map, just start using the ninja ability, and then just end up on the other side. Like, splat zones be darned. Because <laughs> now the arrow spray can get halfway across the map in two seconds and actually reach you. What? You, you think you're safe? You think you're safe with this guy on the loose? Are you kidding me? <laughs> I forgot if we've seen the OG charger. It looks like it has that little that little mustard swirly that we got on the regular splatter shot there. I can't really zoom in on this without losing like a ton of quality. Can I bring the quality up on this? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's better. There we go. But I like how it looks like the back of the charger has almost like a little a little pulley to it here. That's cute. That's cute. And I think in some other shots, you can see the charger has like the color of the ink on the underside. I'm assuming that'll probably change, depending on what, like, team your color is. And I'm curious if, like, the rest of the charger is always gonna be yellow, or if it's just yellow because the enemy team is yellow. It probably is always yellow, but hey. Bada bang, yeah! See? See? It just, it's just looking sharp. Alright, general museum things. We saw one of the Inklings do the squid roll there, which we still don't know anything about. Like, one can assume that it's gonna consume some amount of ink. 
And I think that every single person has it, which is, like, really neat to imagine. You know, it makes them a pretty easy target for a sniper. Like, assuming that you can't cancel your movement while you're in that role, it would just take a player to understand exactly what you're doing to be able to just jump you, which could be useful again for our backlining friends over here. I'm curious what City Map would be like, because honestly, my first thought when I see it is my brain goes, mmm, Hammerhead Bridge, which is probably not coming back because of the whole it's just way too long thing. If we're bringing back Killer Whale, even if it's in a new form, bringing back, like, Hammerhead along with that is not going to end well. Could you imagine multiple players using that surround sound killer whale that's coming out on Hammerhead? Imagine, like, 18 lasers all just in random directions on the, the long map that is Hammerhead. It makes you wonder if they'll finally, like, cancel Walleye, too. And then we get to the good stuff. We get to the goods. I hate that. We all... I'm pretty sure RVC just immediately was not happy with this. Alright, so what they do in this is they hide a lot of information in like quite a few small frames. And that's what we're going to be focusing on as we go through this, honestly. Because those are the things that I found really interesting. This is just like your typical like story mode stuff. I do like that we get at least two different outfits. I'm assuming that a majority of the story mode play will be in this outfit instead of the other outfit. Also, I want to know where is our boy Sheldon? When's he, when's he showing up? Hopefully he shows up around the time that we see uh, Callie and Marie and Agent 3. I, I'm just going to keep him here as much as possible. <laughs> Look at him. Look at him. Just hanging out. Having a good time. Also, like, a lot of the artwork looks really good. A lot of these scenes almost look like they're cutscenes instead of, like, normal scenes, too. So I'm curious about, like, how much cutscene we'll have in this game. Because in the past, most of the cutscene we'd have is like, Hey, look, Octavio is here. He's taking the zapfish. Lol, bye. But this looks like a whole honking thing. I feel like at the very start, we didn't have this clip, so this is probably after we meet Callie and Marie. So maybe we're looking out for when we do or don't have this. Like, this is definitely after, because, again, the clip. So I'm trying to see if like, there's any point where we don't have it. Like, did we have it in this scene here? No, we have the whole hero ensemble, so that really doesn't matter too much. This is also amazing. What's up, danger? <laughs> There's not much to talk about it here, it just, it just looks nice. I'm assuming that we'll probably start in this gear and then change over later to like the comfy other gear. I like this outfit more, I just like, I like the, I like the aesthetic, like the, like the bandaged feet, like the whole jumpsuit look. Okay, uh, 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 I, I want to see, I want to see this frame here with our boys, because it really is just focused on Judd. And his, on his mole, actually. <laughs> you know, they do this on purpose, though. Like, they make it that so you can't read it. So you're like, like, oh, I wonder, I wonder what that is. And I'm curious to try to, like, compare this to, to that there? Hello? All we know is the storyline is focused on mammals. It'd be funny if you show up to Splatsville and they're like, hey, guys, this is Splatsville. We have... Like, they open a door, like, 15 Juds walk out. We got plenty of Juds, so you don't have to bring your Jud here. <laughs> Maybe they've just figured out how to make a ton of them. I mean, they got the rocket. I'm curious how much, like, how important the rocket will be, and we'll get there when the time comes. This just looks like a really sick stage. It just reminds me of, like, the ending scene stuff from Octo Expansion. There's that one time we had to, like, I forget if you climb up or you climb down. I think you're climbing up, so you can get out. And it would be really nice if we have, like, more mobility-based challenges again in the single-player mode. I know some people's gripe with the OG single-player mode in Splatoon 2 is that it sometimes it just isn't too hard. Because a lot of the levels are very linear. Whereas the Octo Expansion, they really experimented with a number of different, like, level types. So it'd be nice to see some kind of changes and see what they come up with. Especially with something like this. Alright, we got our boys. We got... We're just gonna move on. Hopping around here. This one, I... <laughs> this one's just 
such as yuck they're like looking into the squid's anatomy so to speak because they let this boy dry out nice and good so they could see exactly what was going on here you have to wonder because one of the things that they wrote online on twitter was like where did the inklings come from you could imagine that maybe we're gonna look into evolutionary style stuff and why inklings came around instead of more mammals like we know that the mammals kind of got washed out and we're gonna get to that frame in a couple of seconds here i'm pretty sure right right do we get there yeah yeah this is this is the frame this is the good stuff here but the thing about this with the whole thing about oh the sea levels might have risen and that's kind of why like the inklings and octolings and everything else were left is that it looks like the inklings are already here at this point and they look like they're already squids so it kind of this is what I was thinking about, like, oh, they probably showed up, like, you know, after everything got washed out, like, they evolved from squids and octopi. Because if they're already here when everything is getting flooded out, that stops making sense. Unless the Splatlands just kind of appeared after all this water disappeared and it's just supposed to be normal, but... Who knows? I sure don't. I can't wait for the sunken scrolls in this game. People are gonna go feral. There are going to be people that are going to rush the story mode just to get all the scrolls and like learn everything they can. And honestly, I'm probably going to be one of those people. <laughs> oh, can't wait. All right. And this thing we've seen, we've seen our little buddy can kind of like, can kind of munch on the ink, it looks like almost, and just kind of get rid of it, which keeps us safe. I'm curious about how reliant they're going to be on that because it could get repetitive if they're not careful with it. But hopefully you won't do that. This, this is just cute. I, I had nothing to say on this scene. It's just, it's just cute. And again, it's more cutscene-y stuff. So I'm curious about, like, what we should expect from all this. Also, never can go wrong with a cute little bit of pixel art. Yes, yes, nice, nice. We already saw a Cuttlefish. He's kind of just chilling now. We have Agent 3 totally 100% in charge, which I love. But it would be fun if we could have our, like, player avatar talk back to us. You gotta wonder, how are they doing after Octo Expansion? I'm really wondering how much they'll even talk about Octo Expansion, given that it was DLC and not everybody played or owned it. Also, this gun still slaps. I... <laughs> Can you imagine? I, I don't think they would do this, but could you imagine, like, like, bayonet style, if you could just walk up with this and just, just like, give them, give them the old one-two, the old whack em smack em because that thing looks pretty sharp. Literally and figuratively. Uh, and the pose. Ah, oh, the pose. Look at them. Oh my god, I love I love them. Side note here where all of them are kind of team order colored more or less. Not team order. Oh no. Uh, no, no, no. My brain is jumping ahead two steps. They're all team chaos colored. Which makes you wonder where the heck team order still is. Like, Marie's outfit is very more order, but this isn't the outfit that she had in the old poster for Chaos vs. Order. And neither is the outfit for Callie's. Like, these, are, these are two brand new outfits. I just want to see where it goes, you know? I had thought at first that, hey, maybe when we reach, you know, this whole area here, when we're hanging out at the rocket, that maybe this would be the point where we end up, you know, maybe seeing something from Team Order. But it looks like... Callie and Marie might just be in charge of that whole thing, which might be kind of interesting. Or they at least know about it and they're investigating it. We have our boy here. <laughs> our little Sam buddy. I want to know, how do we meet him? There's so much puzzling going on here. Wait, was that like, was that like the old Octo expansion? Oh, no. Nah. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay, it's not exactly. This is more of a linear level. Love seeing the sloshing machine also down here. Smiley face. I'm really curious if we'll have, like, levels up here in all this water. Because <laughs> there will be a lot of falling there, and I'll be one of the people that does all that falling. This is super linear, which is really interesting, but I love the way that it looks. I want to see how close we're going to get to this rocket ship, and it doesn't look like it's active right now. It just looks like it's there. And then we have our guy, of course. We have Octavio just chilling here, but I feel like... Since they're showing him so early in the game, 
I don't know. I don't think they do like a recurring villain thing. Like, hey, you reached the end of world one. I am Octavio. Fight me. And you beat him. He's like, ah, I'll get you next time. I'm thinking, I'm thinking he's going to be a problem. And that maybe I've seen people online claim we might form a truce with him. I'd be down. Because honestly, I don't know how Octavio would really feel about all the, uh, all the, all of his boys turning into wacky mammals, right? Right? He's gotta have some limits. I wanna go here. I wanna go here. Like, this is... Before we get our new outfit. But supposedly, after we meet Callie and Marie in the game, because we have the little earpiece. So I'm not sure, like, when this comes into place, or how we ended up, like, seemingly knocked out at the shores up here. How far away is this from the Splatlands? Either way, it's still gonna slap. <laughs> like, I wanna know how we got here. Cause we're just, we're just chilling here. Like, literally chilling, cause it's cold, right? And then we just get this little scene here. Which people have already overdrawn to heck. And that's that. It would take Octavio away from being the main bad guy if Grizz is the main bad guy. But I would like to hope there's like some like deeper reason for it. I kind of like the bear motif. But for him to, like, not be a bear in the end. We'll have to see what they do. It could be someone who's really inspired to, like, create more mammalians again. And just, like, takes on the bear motif until they can kind of, like, finish their research. But we just don't know until we get to that point where we can kind of learn more about it. Like, riding on the coattails of Splatoon 2, Splatoon 3 is going to sell, like, hotcakes. So hopefully Nintendo makes it high-quality hotcakes so everyone can be happy. Thank you guys for listening. And have a good one. Bye!